game is going to start soon, and that's how it should be. That's how Ben would want it. But before it does, allow me to say one more time for the record for all of us, all of us here today and for those watching, that we will miss you, my friend. We will miss you in our radio, in our cars, in our backyard. You've been a gift to Los Angeles and to baseball itself. It seems forever that you've been guiding us through your personal window into the game. How lucky we were that day in Brooklyn when the microphone passed into your hands. You were the chosen one, the skinny redhead who stood on the shoulders of the biggest kid, ready to look through the knot hole in the fence and describe for the rest of us what was going on. You were better than a golden ticket. You invited us all to pull up, pull up a chair, spend the afternoon, and then proceeded to walk us into the next century. You did it in a style so friendly and unique, so effortless, that years from now we will not be able to explain it to those who never heard it for themselves. The game will not lose its way, but it loses a perspective a singular voice that managed to capture a boy's game played by men at the highest level. You grounded it in a way no one else ever has, trusting that you never had to make more of any one moment than it really was. We couldn't be Kirk and we couldn't be Sandy, but somehow you found a way to put us all in the batter's box, to put us all on the mound, even those lucky enough to have a ticket to be at the game itself had radio, held radios to their heads as if they couldn't trust what they were seeing. Some of my strongest memories of you were being in school, in the classroom, when the World Series still was being played during the day. Who can forget the teachers that we begged and then allowed us to stop our work huddle around a single scratchy transistor radio. They may have been simpler days, but they were also the best of days. And with everything on the line, it was your voice that slowed it down. While we held our breath, you filled in the blanks. And when we couldn't bear to watch or could no longer sit in front of our TVs because the pressure was just too great, you were at your very best. When we were lost for words, you were Norman Rockwell, painting the clearest of pictures, describing some of baseball's greatest moments as if they were nothing more than a familiar bedtime story. For 67 years, you managed to fool us into believing that you were just a sports announcer, when in fact you were really a poet a wordsmith. It was a nice trick. And after almost seven decades, you might have thought that we'd have, we would have caught on. But now the masquerade is over and the jig is up. We're all taking deep breaths, Vin. We're all struggling with our own emotions as we admit that we're down to our last three outs with you. Thanks for always giving it to us straight, the inning and the score. Thanks for helping us to understand the drama. Instead of being above the magic, you chose to marvel at it with us. It was through you, in a game that some call too slow, that we finally began to understand its charm, the slow drift down a lazy river. Compliments are not easy to come by in baseball. They're not given lightly by the players. When they come, they're usually offered up in the simplest of words. Your name is spoken with reverence, afforded only the greatest of players. A universal respect that is simply confirmed by quiet nods. The players would call you a gamer, 
A guy who never missed a start. A nine-inning pitcher who always kept you in the game. A guy who always gave you a chance to win. And if you never played the game, you might think it should be more to describe that kind of greatness. But in this game, it's all you need to know about a man. And if anyone ever wondered what it might feel like to have Vin Scully call your name, I can tell you for sure that it must be something close to heaven. I wasn't a player, but in, for love of the game, I had that moment. You called my imaginary name and my imaginary perfect game, and no one can ever take that away. So as the game gets closer, and we know that you have to move up to the press box, don't mind us as we turn in our seats to look up one more time. Forgive us our silly wave, our clumsy toast, our personal salute. And should your mind begin to wander as the innings start to slip away, we already forgive you if the memories suddenly become too thick then just stop and look around. You're our George Bailey, and it has been a wonderful life. But yours is real, Vin. Your life is real. You found a way. You found your way. You found your calling. You did the work. You reached the top of your profession playing fair and never taking advantage. So we promise, we promise we won't be sad for you. How could we be? We're only sad for ourselves because we would all like to retire someday too. So don't blame us. Don't blame us for wanting to push the sun back up into the sky one more time. For asking God to give us extra innings and a Dodger win. You can't blame us for trying to hold on to you as long as we can. And you can't stop us from saying that we love you. So live your life, Ben. Live your life and see the world with your sweetheart. And shame on us if you ever have to pay for another meal in public. So let's all stand as we just say goodbye to this man. Live your life, Ben. Live your life. Live your life knowing. Live your life knowing that you made a difference in ours. And trust that the list, and trust that the list of the greatest baseball announcers in this century and the last, when they're finally drawn up, and the debate about who sits at the top heats up, as it no doubt will that we won't engage and we won't disparage any colleague you might have admired. We will simply smile and acknowledge that your, if your name is not on, then it isn't a list at all. You leave us, you leave us in the game, Mr. Scully, but not without leaving a lasting impression and not without taking a piece of our broken baseball heart. <laughs>